So here we are in pre-show process. I've committed to taking 16 birds and I have to figure out which 16 it's going to be. So I've been um, looking at them for a couple weeks, kind of thinking, well, this one's looking good, that one's looking good. Um, and um, as of yesterday, I caught, I think about 25 birds, and I put them in these four cages. These ones here, these, these, and these. And then I went through and started eliminating. My first criteria for elimination was a, a bird that was looking overly stressed. Now, um, so for instance, Aerie, my purple spangle, she has had a bouncy tail since she was born. There's something wrong there, but I don't know what it is. Um, uh, I've treated her a couple of times for candida, and it seems to make a dent in it. <clears throat> but she's also extremely heavy right now. I have a bunch of hens that are really heavy from egg weight, which is they put on a bunch of weight when they're getting ready to go into season. Because, of course, when they lay those eggs, it comes directly out of their body's resources. The fluids, the proteins, the fats, the vitamins, the calcium, all of it. So hens tend to, to um, put on a bunch of weight <clears throat> when they're getting ready to go into to, uh, season. So I have some fat girls with me right now. And Aerie was one of them. <clears throat> and when I caught her and put her out here, at first they're a little flustered, then everybody settled down, but Aerie was still sitting there panting on the perch. Now mind you, it was hot, but the other birds were not panting on the perch. So I said, okay, you're not feeling up to this. So I put her back. Um, and I put a couple others back. I'm thinking about putting this girl back. This is Thalia. She's beautiful. She will show, she would show really, really well, but she does have a bum leg. Um, and I can see that she's having trouble already just sitting up on the perches. She's a big, heavy bird. And with a one bum leg and only one leg to hold her up, she gets tired. And I don't want to stress her that much. So I may put her back too. Um, so health is the first criteria. Um, it does happen that birds die in these, um, during these shows. Um, and uh, so I'm very aware of that on a couple of different levels. Um, one of the things is the plucking of the masks. See how she has a mask right there? I'm going to make a video as per requested on how to um, pluck. And um, it's a highly stressful event for a bird. Um, and birds do die in people's hands. But there's a couple of different reasons for that that are really easy to avoid. First of all, when you take these little birds with their high metabolisms and their high body temperatures and you wrap them up in your hot little hands, you can overheat them very fast and they will die of heat prostration in your hands. So when you're doing plucking, you need to do it in a cool place and you need to be conscious of how hot your hand is getting and the bird is in your hand. If that bird opens his beak and starts to pant while you're holding it, put it back. It doesn't matter whether you're done or not. The other thing is, people tend to clutch birds very tight when they're um, in their hands when they're um, plucking them. Um, I've seen guys that actually completely immobilize the bird. They cannot move. They're just gripping that bird because they don't want to get bit. But here's the problem with that. Um, it's like a bad lover that lays on you too hard and you can't breathe. Um, <clears throat> Uh, if you're holding a bird so tight that it can't move, it also cannot expand its rib cage and take a breath. So you're literally going to suffocate it. So, a couple of things to keep in mind. Well, I mean, I've seen it over and over again. People are like, oh no, you're not holding it right. You gotta hold it like this. And they, they're like, I'm like, you know, I'd rather my bird live. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure that I'm not holding it so tight that it can't breathe. Um, <clears throat> and you know that you're holding it too tight when they start biting you because I'm trying to save their lives. So, um, so yeah, uh, we're going to do a, a video. I'm going to do a video on the plucking. I am not great at this. Um, I'm probably super aware of the damage that I'm doing to my relationship with the bird when I hold it down and pull feathers out of it. Um, but really, what I've noticed is that, that the birds seem to take it better than I do. <laughs> so, so right now, we're just looking at everybody. Um... I need to get this down to 16 birds, and at this point I have... Okay, so I am not... I'm probably not going to take... This is Luna. Um, you see her little bouncy has her tail? Well, no, it went away. She's a little light. 
And I'm going to take her sister right here, Demeter, who looks exactly like her. Um, Luna actually has the better feather. I mean, the better spots on her mask. But, oh yeah, see the tail bouncing? There's something a little off there. She's not at 100%, so she is not going to go. Um, so I have four birds in here. I'm probably going to eliminate um, Thalia down there. She's, there's nothing wrong with her. She's just taking a nap. Um, and again, she's not sitting on the perch because she has a bum leg from Ricketts. Um, I take her and everything when she's a baby, and she does use the leg and stands normally, but it gets tired. So she likes to sleep on the bottom of the cage. So, um, so I'll leave her. So I have four birds in here that are possibilities, four here that are possibilities. There's five in here that are possibilities, and six in here that are possibilities. So what does that add up to? Four, four is eight. Plus 6 is 14, plus 5 is 19. If I have to whittle away a few more. Um, my inclination, the other thing I don't do is take birds under 6 months old. Um, because they're not old enough to feel confident around other birds. Zoo, could you stop please? This bird is a beast. Shush! Yeah, shush! I am not going to steal your baby. He's super duper tame, but he has a baby in there, and so he takes his parenting responsibilities very seriously. Do you see him? He climbed down and looked in the nest. Is my baby okay? Stay away. Anyway. Um, so, part of the uh, elimination process might be, you see this guy right here, and his brother is that gray spangle right behind him. They are 11 months old, or 10 months old, so they're old enough to take, but they're pretty immature still. They don't have a lot of spots on their masks. They're a little on the smaller side. Um, so I may just save them for another day and leave them here too. So that's part of the process, and my elimination is all about um, the bird's fitness for the stress that I'm about to put it through. So other ways that I reduce stress during shows, I will take three of these cages. I, I, have go, I go to shows commonly, see people with, um, you know, 15 or 20 birds in one cage like this. Um, half the birds don't have any perch space and are sitting on the bottom and they're bickering with each other and, and biting each other and, and um, socially stressed out because they weren't in a cage together so they don't have a pecking order. And I just can't think of a better way to stress out a bird. So, I will put no more than six birds in a cage. Um, I, I raise up both the perches to the same height. And more crucially, all of these birds came from the same flight cage. All five of these birds came from one giant flight cage, so they already have an established pecking order. There's no stress involved here. They're buddies. Same with this cage right here. They all came from the same flight cage. In fact, these two cages came from the same flight cage together um, and probably will get combined so that they'll all be together and I'll end up, I'm taking one out of here, so they'll end up with eight birds in this cage. Um, but it's better to combine, to have an extra bird or two in a cage and have them all have a pre-established pecking order than it is to start mixing them. These birds all came from the other flight cage. So, um, <clears throat> th these two cages, if I have to combine, would be combined. So, um, then I have older birds that have been around for a while that know birds from all the flight cages. So, if I have to combine birds from the two flight cages into a third cage, I'll pick the oldest birds that all know each other. So, Luna right here and Hephaestus, they're bonded mates. I would put them in the third cage. Probably with um, Haverty and Apollo right there because they all know each other from because um, they used to be in the same flight case together and birds do not forget. So, so um, traveling accommodations do not overcrowd. Zoo, shush! You are terrible. Shush, shush. Yes, I see. It's your cage. Be quiet. Um, he's just not going to do it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, um, combined birds, do not overcrowd your traveling cages. Combined birds that know each other and are from the same flight cage, so they have an established pecking order. Um, and catch your birds a couple of days beforehand and just look at them. 
so that you can see she's a little fluffed up. The tail bounces occasionally. She's not going into a show. I'd rather she live. Because um, it is a high-stress situation for them. Um, but there's some very simple things to do to make that easier. Okay, so uh, I'll keep you updated on my um, elimination process.